Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. We have Kathy Brunick with us again. We were at um, Crete Spinning Hut earlier today, and I brought her over here for some filming. And she was uh, working away at a rug hook, hooking with her own um, hand spun singles. And I said, oh, let's just take that too, because we have had Jenny on here before talking about rug hooking with yarn, and Kathy knows so much about it. How long have you been rug hooking? I started rug hooking in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And I started using hand spun yarn. Your hand spun or hand my hand spun? And uh, how I decided to do it was that I was experimenting with dyeing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had seen a small uh, round pattern that I really liked. It was just two little sheep in a pasture with a, a fence and a, the sky and with a couple clouds. And I thought, well, that'd be perfect. It was like a chair seat. And that started it. And I found that I enjoyed it. I don't make a lot of pieces because they usually, a rug like this takes me at least two years. Mm. And um, I have to accumulate the yarn, and since I spin it all, it takes a while. And uh, uh, mostly I have made chair seats and um, pillow tops, and uh, the rugs that I have I don't really use on the floor because I figure I put too much work into them. Absolutely, for and two years worth. So, yes, yeah, so I have uh, I have them on the back of rocking chairs and on the top of, of my cedar chest. Okay, you've got a beautiful home, I can tell. So here is what she's been working on, and I assume this is your own pattern. Yes. Yes. We've got here, we've talked about it before with Jenny, it's a burlap. And where did you, you you've got some... This, this is actually landscaping burlap oh. that they sold at Farm and Fleet as bags. And they were $2 a piece, and I took it home and threw them in the washing machine and then ironed them. Okay, and, you're the only one who's uh, ever ironed them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, probably. And then I, I uh, set out to figure out all the colors of yarn that I had accumulated. And I had to come up with a pattern that had a lot of reds and pinks in it since I had a limited amount of greens. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, I decided that I looked in several rug hooking books, and one was a pattern of all hearts, uh -huh. but I thought, no, well, I don't want to just copy somebody's okay. pattern. So I decided that I would make flowers out of hearts again, and I mm -hmm. jazz it up with a little bit of orange in there. And I do primitive rug hooking um, in that I don't do a lot of shading. Uh-huh. And then you didn't have quite enough, so this one got to be natural? Well, the reason this one is plain is uh, I thought it would be too much to mm -hmm. put another flower. Mm -hmm. You can't, the direction of the heart, since you want to uh -huh. have the direction all around that they point out. Uh-huh. And if you put a heart in there, you can't do that. I want, so. to, I want to show one other thing before she gives us the demonstration. This is how, so she wrote on it with just a Sharpie, I assume. Yes. And you can decide any shape. And yeah. what you do is you you get a piece of uh, uh, like poster board mm. and you draw your pattern on the poster board. Mm -hmm. So then you just take it and lay it and you trace around it. And it's exactly the same. And trace yes. around it and you can see she yes. either put it down wrong or experimented and said, no, yes. I want it this way. That's and right. then when we go to what she's working on right here, um, if you can see, she is just poking this tool that Jenny also had brought. Looks a little bit like a crochet hook. With a handle? With a short handle instead of just having, so you can really, because you're really kind of working it, especially you were yes. talking earlier about how you're such a dense rug hooker. Yes. Yes. So then she takes that, in her left hand she's holding her yarn. Uh, the yarn is being fed from underneath and I'm holding it and then I pull it up and I'm trying to be consistent so that mm. that the loop is about the same height and you're working it tight 
so that the loops do not come out easily. And everybody always wants to know about repairing. Well, when you use yarn like this, it's mm -hmm. easy because the piece of yarn is just going to be hanging off the back. And all you have to do is come back mm -hmm. and rehook it in. Poke down your hook and catch yeah. it and pull it back up. It's just, it's a very simple process, very easy. Many people do it with rags, wool rags, but uh, I found that wool, trying to find wool rags was really hard. Uh, and so since I, I was a hand spinner, and in the beginning when you're a hand spinner, most of your yarn is heavy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is uh, lumpy bumpy. And in rug hooking, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It all works out and you just have to keep making loops. I can see as you're doing this from my angle that you're slightly, when you do the hook, you're very slightly pulling, pulling down. Pulling back, yes. Um, whether that's locking or, or just to make sure it's the same height. It, you're trying to keep it the same height. Right, and that is a personal thing too. I've seen primitive yeah. rugs that have um, different yes. heights to the pile. Yes, and if you see uh, the primitive done in the uh, cloth, it's much yes. different. Yeah, it's because much it kind of has angles to it. Yes, yes, and the loops are are much larger, oh. and so depends on how wide you cut your wool. It, well, primitive is usually half yes. an inch, so oh, that wide. Yeah, it's wow. that wide. Yeah, and it depends if you're using wool or cotton, or you can even use blends. Hmm. So, the wool is great because you felt it, and then it won't ravel. But I have seen uh, cotton that they use the cotton strips and they ravel, and so you get this really interesting mm. kind of stringy top. So, so when you say that you felt the wool, do you mean when the whole thing's done, you throw it in and wash no, it before you, before you've before got it stained? You, no, when no. when you're doing it out of cloth, mm -hmm. you felt the cloth oh, first. Right. With the yarn. Um, uh, you're, you really aren't felting it. You're doing what they call fulling. Uh -huh. You put the yarn in extremely hot water when you wash it, and then you... As, as a skein. You, yes, as okay. a skein. And then as you rinse it, you use cold water, so it shocks it. Okay. And that's kind of a boiled wool. And so it, it stays together better, and it makes it a little tougher. Okay. Well, this is just beautiful, and it's uh, wonderful to know, again, different things that you can do with your spinning, different things you can do with different wools that somebody might say, oh, you can't use that. Yes. I'm going to keep that in mind as I encounter different fleeces. Yes. And um, this is just another beautiful piece of artwork which our pioneer mothers would say, you know, you're making something out of nothing. That's right. Out of a, or a $2 sack of... <laughs> yes. <Feed sack>. yeah. <laughs> and and because uh, in the United States, feed no longer comes in burlap bags. Oh, these were actually bags from Brazil from cocoa beans. <laughs> That's great. Because if you read the back of it, you'd see, or well, what's underneath the working that it says cocoa beans. So it can help keep you awake. Well, <laughs> I don't know how it keeps you awake, but yes. Well, thank you again for coming and sharing yet another craft. We really You're enjoyed welcome. having you here, and I know that we've enjoyed all of us hearing Kathy's wonderful wisdom with rug hooking this time. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. Today we have Kathy Brunick with us again. We have talked about knitted lace doilies, and now we're going to talk about some of the wonderful shawls that she's produced, and she's brought some of the patterning and the books that can help encourage you as you start to journey down the wonderful tangled web of lace. It uh, That road never ends, I think. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and then the first, um, I'm just gonna jump right in because we have so many wonderful examples. This is out of alpaca. Kathy's homespun. An alpaca, and was this one of Crete's alpaca? No, it's one of the alpacas that I bought from Crete. His name was Satabri, and uh, he was a big male. And so I 
spun it. It's not as fine, but mm -hmm. this is a Myrna Stallman, her book. And let me in, sh let me show you that uh, book as you're talking. Her book. Uh, you can decide if you want to do them fine or heavy. It doesn't matter. And she does a shawl that is has fitted shoulders, so they stay on very nice. And she is a master of lace knitting and definitely of the uh, lace uh, writing. Yes. Do you know where she's out of? No. Okay. Don't remember. Um, this is a book that I have interlibrary loaned through Fulton County Public Library, and I loved it so much that I either I own it or it's on my wish list. And here's an example of what Kathy just mentioned. This is a Faroese um, shawl, and it has built into it. It's not that it was blocked to this shape, but the actual stitching allows there to be extra fabric over the shoulders. So if you've ever worn a triangular shawl and it keeps slipping backwards, this does not happen with these um, kind of angel wing shaped or wing yes. shaped shawls. Yeah. And so that shawl in the yes. brown alpaca has yes. those extra stitches knit in so that it sits on your shoulders correctly. And since it's from alpaca, we might as well mention that alpaca fiber is a hollow fiber and as such yes. is um, very warm. Very warm. It's warmer than sheep wool. Yes. Hair, which is actually uh, uh, very stiff and yes. very coarse, and then you have the down under it. So to be usable for spinning, it has to be separated. Mm -hmm. uh, camel, again, is very warm, uh, comparable to uh, Angora rabbit. Mm. So, But it's not a hollow fiber. No, no. The hair so. part is the hollow oh, fiber. Oh, is it? Yes. And is yes. that used often for rugs? Uh, not really. Too. Uh, uh, it's used f more in things like uh, leashes, ropes, hmm. that type of thing, because it's not as long as you would think, you know, and it's very, very stiff. Yes, it is. I lived in Mongolia for a year, and one of my students, I taught English as a second language, one of my students' mothers knit me camel hair socks, and I think there were some guard hairs in oh, there yes. because it was not soft and downy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> wears very well. It does. So this is a one example. And then basically Kathy is a master of many different types of shawls. You think of shawl lace knitting, but then within that there are many different segments. One yes. of them would be the Stallman. Yes. And this is an example of, this is the Shetland, or which one is this? Yeah. That is the Shetland out of Rowan. Okay. And... Um, I believe they had done it as a garter stitch based, I'm not sure. Uh, and you work the center first, mm -hmm. and, and they had wanted you to work the ends back and forth because they didn't want you to have to purl in pattern. This is mm -hmm. your actual knitted lace okay. because every row is a pattern row. Right. Okay. So you're working pattern on both sides. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I do not like to sew corners because I like to have the nice line in yep. the corner. And when you sew it, it's very obvious. Right. So I just worked it circularly. Uh -huh. And so I knit one row and then I purled a row in pattern. Okay, which is difficult. Well, no, it's because it, it was because your right side was facing you the whole time. Yes. Okay. Got yes. it. You you get accustomed to it. Right. Uh, and and you learn that that in Shetland type knitting, you really do not have to do the decreases or increases that that like uh, are facing each other or facing away from each other. Oh. So you don't have to do the shaped increases and decreases. Why? Because it doesn't matter. Once you can't it's see blocked, it. you don't you don't really so you, you can't, can't tell, tell a difference it. between an SSK and a no. knit two together. No. So you just do knit two together actually, for the whole thing? Actually, in Shetland knitting, when you have a lot of knit two together, they do a special way of where you just lift a thread over and then you knit that one. 
So there is no directionality. Almost like a bind off and then you knit into yes. it. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So just to be clear with all of you who may be encountering this for the first time, what Kathy was saying is that there's a difference between the words knitted lace and lace knitting. Yes. So this is knitted, knitted lace, lace because she's only working the pattern on one row and then the next row or the even rows are this is this is this every is row patterned on every row but it's in garter yes it's okay. in garter that's why i didn't and recognize this the, much the, so this is knitted the lace the center is every row is knit knitted but every row is also a pattern the ends are knitted in uh, one row is knit and then because i was knitting circularly one row is purl and again that is patterned on every row on every row yes and that's knitted lace lace knitting is that you knit one pattern row and, and then, then you, you do a plain knit row a plain row either knit or, or purl. purl just depends on yeah all right well i'd love to stay on each of these but we're going to keep <laughs> Moving on, this is one that she has designed herself. Yes. What can you tell us about and this? this? And it, right this now, this is an alpaca and silk blend, and I bought the alpaca from the sisters who have uh, their convent outside of Terre Haute, Saint Indiana. Mary's? I'm not sure. I think name. it's Saint Mary's of the Woods. I've gotten yeah. some and I, from there uh, too. I dyed it a pink, and I dyed the silk pink. And I designed this shawl uh, for a friend's daughter who is getting married. And as you can see, there's hearts. And the hearts together in the center almost look like a flower. And then on the edge. Yeah, you can see there's rows of hearts. They're facing down here, but it goes all the way to the perimeter. Yeah. And this is Gorgeous worked work. from the center outwards. Similar to the doilies that you shared with us in yes. another time. Yes. Absolutely gorgeous. And I wanted to take a moment here too and point out this is how she wrote this. Okay. If you look down here, yeah, it's all printed. of this very fine um, graph paper and of course pencil. <laughs> yes. 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 And a lot of math. I do tell my children when they if they might say, I'm not going to use math, I'll say, you know, I'm using math in ways I never thought I would have. So here's the center where she would have cast on, and it comes out because she's increasing. Yes. And that's what makes, when you put the four together, she, she repeats this four times, and it becomes an entire square. Null, shall knit in the round, but it becomes a square. Yes. Yep, and that's just very fine work. And here is the Rowan book that she mentioned as well for that first, I'm sorry, the second shawl. Rowan lace, and they have, um, That's the oh, picture. there it is. Yes. Of course, well, Rowan is a British com There's yarn somewhere. company. There. Yeah. yeah. They have the most beautiful pictures of little waif-like um, models standing in romantic places wearing beautiful hand-knitted goods. Yes. Gorgeous stuff. So we have three more to share with you. How about the one that your hand is resting on first? Okay. This is an Estonian, and it is out of the second book of Estonian knitting. And it's their traditional patterns with a lot of nubs. Every, as you can see, it's a circle. And then it has a nub in the middle. And then on the ends, you can see there's nubs. And that's what Estonian knitting is known for. Mm -hmm. And these um, noops are not particularly difficult to make. They're just a little bit tedious. No. In Estonian knitting, uh, you do, this is a sock knit stitched. Mm -hmm. So you knit them. First, you do all the loops on the right side, and then you knit them, purl them together on the wrong side. And the big problem is that in Estonian knitting, there's usually an over before the group. So when you go to purl it off, 
you always want to pick up that over. So you have to be very careful not to uh, pick up the overs. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So um, when I've done it, it's been seven loops. It can be five or it can be seven, mm -hmm. wh whichever. So instead of um, wrapping your yarn once, I'm trying to remember. You, you wrap, you knit front, back, front, back, front, back. Yeah, you, you pick up a loop, you wrap it, you pick up a loop, you wrap it, you pick up a loop. And so. then when you come back, you put all those together so you don't yes. have five extra stitches. No. And what happens, and of course it's hard to see on television, but you have this beautiful texture. It's, yes. It's not a hard bump, it's a soft um, texture yes. that's added to it. And when you're wearing this on a black dress or on a coat, it's just, it's very dramatic and yes. very noticeable. And it's beautiful Estonian lace. So this is from a book that was created in Estonia, but this is a book that we have in our library here at Fulton County. And check it out, even just to read it and take a look at it. Nancy Bush is very famous American knitter who has gone to Estonia and gathered all of these traditional um, patterns and written about them and has tons of pictures and as she goes on knitting tours and takes people along yes. um, and has many gorgeous shawls that she has collected and written about, including the one right in front of us here. Yeah. Um, or was this from the Hopsala book? No, that's from her book. Okay. This is, uh, I didn't mark it, but it's Queen Sylvia. Yes, that one's on my queue. And um, but this, so all of these, this is very, very fine thread yes. that is basically created to weave with a commercial. Um, this is from this is loom. from Lotus Yarns from China, and it's basically cashmere uh, and silk, and it is used to weave elegant clothing, uh, something like men's suits or fine ladies' suits. However, uh, I bought it from. Sandy Turp, who runs Moonrise Lace Knitting, and she had people who were knitting with it, and a friend bought this for me after um, I had knit her daughter the wedding shawl out of uh. this. So then she bought me a couple more skeins of it, and uh, I knit her one, and then I've knit this one for myself. This is so fine and light. You can see how small it meshes up. I mean, this is finer than wedding lace. Um, well, it's... <laughs> wedding it's ring a, shawls. Yeah, it's about, well, the, she had uh, put hers through a wedding ring, so, yeah. uh -huh. yes. So it's, it's like a veil itself. Yes. Just fantastic. And then we have um, at least one more. Was this something you wanted? This is an Evelyn Clark. Oh, okay. And this was one of the first shawls that I did. And this is her Estonian arches. And because I really like oh, garter-based yeah. uh, stitches, where she did it in socknet stitch, I did it in garter. garter. So the arches she's referring to, this is a common motif yes. in um, Estonian shawls. Yes. And I, it's often used along with other things, but she has knitted this entire shawl, which if we can get the shot up here, the entire shawl in um, this pattern. It's beautiful. And, and what that, is the yarn? That was Polly Pay Wool, and it was from one of my sheep, and I hand dyed it. Beautiful. A lovely gift from a sheep. Yes. And Evelyn Clark is a famous American um, shawl designer yes. who lives in the Pacific Northwest. One of her books. I guess we put it this way. Correct. Yes. And although this shawl is not in the book, this is a very good book mm -hmm. as it gives you many different patterns and ways that you can combine the patterns to hmm. do your own design. And um, as well, Evelyn has many individual patterns for sale yes. on Ravelry. So look her up. And uh, yes, she is a wonderful lady. I've been able to meet her several times in Seattle. So our last one here, would you say that Shetland shawls are your specialty, or do you not have a specialty with all uh, of them? 
I don't know. I enjoy Shetland, um, and I think it's because it is garter stitched, mm, okay, based, and I really enjoy it. So this, this is, is a center a, out. Uh, That's unusual for Shetland, isn't it? This is actually. It looks like the center out, but ah. it is not worked that way. Oh. This one is worked, you work all the edging lace first. Really? And then you come around and you pick up over a thousand stitches. Do you now? <laughs> and you divide it into four, and then you work it from the outside in. This is a Gladys Amadoro. Oh. And that is her way of working. And she was a very well known uh, knitter in the Shetland Isles. Oh my goodness. And she she decided that she wanted to do them circularly, but she did it the traditional way, that you start from the outside and you work in. So at one point you had to graft the... No, you don't graft. What do you well, do you, the edge you, when you've got you, the two ends together? Well, you work the edge here, all of this edging. Right. And when you hit, I can't find it, but in the middle of it, then you pick up all these stitches on that edging because you've slipped the first stitch. Right. So it's okay. left a nice... I can see uh, where that's at, but what happens where you've started it and knit all the way around when you come back to... to well, you lose area. it because it's the beginning and you just lose it in, wow. in the patterning. That's it amazing. gets lost. So... That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and this was one of my own Shetland sheep. Aww. This was Zara, and she was from Gail Former of Spencer, Indiana. Huh. I had bought her. And uh, and it's a two-ply? Yes, it's two-ply. That's just lovely. Lovely to knit Shetland with Shetland sheep. Yes. So, Kathy, thank you again for sharing your wealth of shawls. <laughs> I know welcome. I'm inspired. I certainly hope some of you are. If not to knit, at least to know that it's out there and to appreciate some fine lace when you come across it. It's gorgeous yes. hand work. Try it Thank though. you. It's worth it. Thank you for coming again. You're welcome. To say that it's overrated Crochet fashion the thing of the past But just because it's complicated Doesn't mean my grandma swear to work last